the sun launches a mini solar storm and hot on its heels is some fast solar wind pushing it from behind. Will the combination be enough to give us some decent storming at Earth? Those stories and more in the news this week. Solar activity really picks up this week. We've had a new region emerging on the Earth-facing disk, and no sooner than this thing pops up, then bam, you see that right there? That is a mini solar storm that was launched in the Earth strike zone. It is now headed towards Earth, and because we have this long finger of a coronal hole, we have some fast solar wind that's also headed towards Earth. The both of them are coming pretty much at the same time, and it could give us some decent chance for solar storming over the next few days. Switching to your m -flare threat meter, you can see we are extremely low still when it comes to X-ray flux. We're hovering just below the B floor. There's really no chance for any big flares, so no threat for radio blackouts, which is really good news for you GPS operators, especially on the day side. The bad news, of course, means that we barely have any solar flux as well. We are struggling at just about the low end of marginal for you amateur radio operators to support propagation, and unfortunately, this trend is going to continue for the foreseeable future. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've actually been pretty quiet, but on settled conditions. Back on the 15th, we had a small pocket of fast wind that bumped us up to active conditions for just a little bit, and then we quieted back down. Then things stayed reasonably quiet until about the 20th, 21st, when bam, we got hit by another pocket of fast wind. This time it bumped us up to minor storm conditions, and it lasted for about a day. It gave us some decent aurora, cleared down to mid-latitudes, and then things have quieted down and quieted down. So we're now back to unsettled conditions, but this won't last long as we're expecting that solar storm to arrive with that fast wind here in the next day or so. And these recent solar storms, although they have not lasted all that long, they still brought beautiful aurora all around the world. We saw some gorgeous shots in Sweden and coronas in Norway. It was in the UK. Here's Shetland and also Norfolk, some beautiful spires in Norfolk. It was seen in several places in Iceland, and it was even seen on a British Airways flight to Los Angeles. Now, if we go over the pond, it was seen in multiple places in Canada despite the clouds, like New Brunswick and in Alberta. And in the United States, at the same time it was seen in Alaska, of course Alaska, it was also seen in Maine, and Wisconsin, even clear down to Iowa, and it was seen in Washington State. And then down south, the southern lights were seen in Tasmania. Now, getting back to that solar storm, this is our prediction model, Enlil. This is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and you can see that solar storm coming out somewhat east of Earth. Now, it's not going to be a direct hit. We're actually going to get grazed by its edge, so it'll be a little bit of a weaker impact. But remember, this storm could get enhanced by the fast wind that's pushing from behind, so it might still be a pretty decent impact. Now, we expect the storm to hit sometime on the 29th, it's a little bit hard to predict when they're edge on like that because it, there's a little wiggle room there. But sometime in the 29th through the 30th, we might get a chance for some decent solar storming. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And when you look at the backside of the sun right now, where are the active regions? There's nothing right now. It's completely quiet. We're getting close to solar minimum, folks, and this is the story. The one nice thing that we see, though, is that from the north, we can see two dark coronal hole-like fingers. Now, that one on the far side is actually beginning to rotate into Earth view, and it could cause us some storming from some fast wind, probably in about 10 days. Now, that second finger, that's going to take at least two weeks to rotate into Earth view and into maybe the Earth strike zone. So we have at least another couple solar storms on the tail of the one we're just about to get that'll keep us busy even over the next couple weeks.
Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that mini solar storm that's being enhanced by that fast wind from behind. At high latitudes, NOAA is giving us about a 55% chance of a major storm with storming conditions to continue into the beginning of December. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions with about a 20% chance of a minor storm. And again, conditions should continue into the beginning of December before things uh, settle down. Now, that's good news for you uh, aurora photographers. If you amateur radio operators, expect some disruptions, especially on the night side. You GPS operators at high latitudes, especially near aurora, you could have problems. But you low latitude GPS operators should like this. The solar storm will give you some decent stability so that you can use your GPS more at night. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green. We have very little risk for any big flares right now. Region 2689 is the only numbered region on the disk, although we are watching one that's emerging very slowly. But meanwhile, the solar flux is hovering just barely in the yellow. We're not in poor conditions yet for you amateur radio operators. We're still marginal, but we're just barely hanging on. And with this solar storm, expect Expect some propagation issues, especially at night, over the next few days into the beginning of December before things get a little bit better. So the space weather this week is looking really exciting. We have a mini solar storm that's being chased by some fast wind, and hopefully that combination will bump us up to some decent storm levels. We could even get aurora down to mid latitudes over the next few days and into the beginning of December. So you aurora photographers, make sure you charge your batteries. Now you amateur radio operators, I know you're groaning. We're barely hanging on to propagation as it is, and now you have to deal with a solar storm that's going to disrupt things, especially on the Earth's night side. But that's just going to be for a couple days, and then things should settle back down, and you'll probably get a nice week of quiet. So hopefully that uh, solar flux will stay up at the marginal levels for you, so you can enjoy that quiet for at least the first week of December. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.